So hey, it's time for another book review, and as a tribute to my newborn son, who my wife and I named Micah, today I have chosen the Old Testament book of Micah, a book that is seldomly read and very commonly misunderstood, but hopefully after today you have a much better understanding of what this book is about. Coming up. Hey my friend, welcome to The Beat. My name is Alan Parr. Thank you so much for tuning in. If this is your first time here, it's a pleasure. If you enjoy this video, consider subscribing and hit that little bell notification so you won't miss a beat. So I know what you're thinking. You're like, man, the book of Micah, that's an old book, that's Old Testament. How can that possibly relate to my life and what I'm going through today in 2018? Well, you may be surprised at what some of these minor prophetic books in Old Testament have to do with how you live your life and Hopefully today I can make it very, very practical and applicational to where you are. But before we jump into these four lessons, I wanna give you a little bit of background on the book of Micah. Micah is in a portion of the Old Testament that scholars have coined as the minor prophets. We call them the minor prophets, not because they're less important, but because they are shorter prophetic books than let's say the book of Isaiah that has 66 chapters. Micah has seven chapters. It's smaller, so they call these books the minor prophets. So Micah was a Hebrew man that was called by God to be a prophetic voice to the nation of Israel and his main responsibility was to expose or call out the sinful practices of his day which could include fraud it could include oppressing the poor or lying murder theft greed and things like that and real quick if you enjoy this video and you want to learn more about the minor prophets let me know in the comment section below okay what can we learn from this book that can apply to our life Lives. Okay, lesson number one, there is a danger in premeditated sin. Micah chapter two, verse one says this, woe to those who plan iniquity, to those who plot evil on their beds. So throughout the Bible, God clearly distinguishes between what's called intentional sin and unintentional sin. And unintentional sin might be something like, hey, you're going about your way, not really thinking about sin, but you are tempted by something that you weren't expected to be tempted by, and you fall into that sin. Now, God hates that sin, but what he hates more is somebody who is making plans and provisions to sin against God with the assumption that, hey, I can do what I want to do. God loves me. God is a God of love. And hey, I'm forgiven for all the sins, past, present, and future. I can take advantage of God's grace. This is the type of premeditated sin that God hates. So I want to encourage you today, if there is anything in your life, to check your heart to see if there's anything that you're doing that could be considered considered or fall into the category of premeditated sin. Lesson number two, God takes it seriously when we speak on his behalf. Micah chapter three, verse five says this. This is what the Lord says. As for the prophets who lead my people astray, they proclaim peace if they have something to eat, but prepare to wage war against anyone who refuses to feed them. Now, what in the world is this talking about? Well, the prophets in this day apparently would give a positive prophetic word, such as you are going to have peace in your life, or there's going to be peace in the nation if people would pay them a certain amount of money. But if people didn't pay them, then they would prophesy that there would be war coming or bad things happening to them in hopes that the people would be hungry for another word from God in terms of how they should govern themselves for the upcoming war, and then they would be willing to pay that prophet more money for another word from God. And God says, hey, you prophets are in error. So God takes it very seriously whenever we say, thus says the Lord, which is the reason why we have to be careful when we go about our Christian life and we say, you know, God told me this. I was speaking to God and God said this. God told me that. God said this. God said that. God, see, we as Christians go around all the time and we're constantly throwing those words around. God told me, God said this. We have to be careful because in the Old Testament, anyone who spoke on God's behalf as a prophet, and if that word did not come to pass, the Bible says that this person was stoned to death. I think that many Christians today would be much more careful about saying God said this if we knew that if we said that and it didn't come to pass, that God would strike us dead. The third lesson that I believe we can learn from the book of Micah is that God prefers obedience rather than sacrifice. 
Micah chapter six, verses six through eight says this. What can we bring to the Lord? Should we bring him burnt offerings? Should we bow before God most high with offerings of yearly calves? Should we offer him thousands of rams and 10,000 rivers of olive oil? Should we sacrifice our firstborn children to pay for our sins? You see, in the Old Testament, the way that you would be atoned or forgiven of your sins is that you would bring a certain animal, whether it may be a dove, a pigeon, a bull, a goat, or whatever that particular sin called for, and you would bring it to the priest, and then that priest would sacrifice that that animal on the altar and you would be forgiven. And so the people are basically saying, what can we give to pay for our sins? And Micah comes back and says this, no, O people, the Lord has told you what is good. And this is what he requires of you to do what is right, to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. Micah is basically saying, hey, I'm sick of your sacrifices. Stop bringing these sacrifices, just assuming that that's what I want. He says, hey, that may forgive you of your sins, but that's not going to deal with the heart issue. He says, instead, I've already told you what I want you to do. Number one, I want you to do what is right. In other words, treat people fairly. Number two, I want you to love mercy, be merciful towards people in your life. And then number three, walk humbly with your God. He says, if you do these things, you're going to stop having to feel like you need to bring all these sacrifices to please me. In the same way, we have a lot of Christians today that think that, you know what, if I just pay my tithes, if I give God a good offering, or if I give God a good service, I use my gifts in church, then therefore I'm sacrificing these things to God. And therefore that kind of covers some of my behavior over here, because after all, I've given this much to God and God is saying, no, I don't want your sacrifices, right? Keep that. I want obedience from you. I want your life to be a sacrifice to me and Instead of you thinking that these sacrifices, whether it's tithes, offerings, a bull, a, a pigeon, a goat, or your, your spiritual gifts to God, or whatever you think covers your sins, he says, I would rather have your obedience than your sacrifices. And then the fourth lesson that we can learn from Micah is that there will be consequences to our sin. Now, I know that's not what we want to hear, but it is in the Bible. Micah 6, 13 through 15 says, therefore, I will wound you. I will bring you to ruin for all your sins. Now, Watch this in verse 14. You will eat, but never have enough. Your hunger pangs and emptiness will remain. And though you try to save your money, it will come to nothing in the end. You will save a little, but I will give it to those who conquer you. Verse 15, you will plant crops, but not harvest them. You will press your olives, but not get enough oil to anoint yourselves. God is basically saying the things that you think would bring satisfaction normally are no longer going to satisfy you. All of your attempts to gain money and get wealth are not going to work because God who controls everything is not going to allow you to put these things over him. And finally, he says, hey, your efforts to build and plant and grow things aren't going to work either because once again, until you get these things out of your life and put me first, I'm not going to bless your efforts. So I know that wasn't a feel good message, but that is what the book of Micah is all about. It was about a man who was called by God to expose the sinful practices of the people in the Old Testament in hopes that the people would turn from their ways and repent. If you found this video helpful in any way, feel free to share it with a friend. Also, if you haven't done so already, I would love it if you would subscribe. Check out some of the other videos on this channel. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time on the